I sat in this room three years ago, and, and as I said, I don't want to make this about me. This is about the men and the University of Virginia, but I'll start off as I sat in this room three years ago uh, after lo losing a semifinal game in overtime. And, uh, you know, two teams, back then it was Brown and Maryland, this one, Virginia Duke, who are this close, and yet the range of emotions are this far apart. It's almost not fair. Um, what I said three years ago was, boy, was that fun. You know, and this is the, this is the game of lacrosse at its best. And obviously the showcase this type of weekend. Um, and we had another fun one today. And uh, um, I'm just really, really fortunate and uh, grateful to have men who have committed to something larger and bigger than themselves and to sacrifice for the team. Obviously, you have talented men, guys who can make plays. What was going on in the first half? Did we get caught up in the moment? Um, I'm fortunate. Sean Kerwin's won a national championship. Kip Turner's won a national championship. Bo Laurie, our volunteer assistant, has been in a national championship game two years ago. So there was experience on the staff, but it was not, not in, the, in the team. And, and maybe that was, we saw that early. A lot of turnovers, unforced turnovers, and tentativeness. Um, and uh, I was probably more animated in, at halftime than normal with this team uh, about you know, sort of emotional things. And this team responded. And fellas, I've said, this is our moment. We've earned this moment. We don't deserve this. We've earned this. And take the moment. And, and obviously, Coach Kerwin made a couple adjustments, as he always does. Uh, but these guys executed. The men next to me, um, obviously others, Matt Moore. <coughs> and it's just I'm really, really fortunate to, to coach men who will you know, buy in, do whatever is asked of them, and, uh, and, and commit to being um, the best team player they can be. Thank you. Take questions for student athletes uh, right in the front here. Get started. Hi. Um, Ian, what was the biggest difference? Obviously, Duke's, what was so tough about Duke defense in the first half? And then what was the biggest adjustment you guys had to make to you know, 10 goals in the second half plus the one in double overtime? Like, what was the biggest difference there? Uh, right. Uh, we, yeah, hear me. Uh, yeah, we, um, we opened up the inside a little bit. Um, we, instead of, 10 yards, we hired uh, the two crease guys up. Um, that opened up the dive um, and, and the inside looks, and that um, ultimately opened up the perimeter shots. Go middle. Ian, in overtime, does mus muscle memory just take over on that play, or are you thinking at the time that you know this shot could send us to the <laughs> national championship uh, game? Um, I'm not thinking. That's, that's something that me and Matt have connected on before. Um, incredible look by Matt, um, and I just had to do the easiest part and just put it in the back of the net. Ian, can you take us through the goal that tied the game and then won it in overtime? Again, an incredible look by Matt Moore. Um, he did the, the grit, um, and I just saw saw a shooting lane, and I took it. And um, But Matt Moore did an incredible job, um, eyes up, and, and, and see the player he's become um, behind. Um, it's, it's incredible. Ryan, I'll get you involved. Um, you get another game. You are mm -hmm. going to go out. You've one more game as a senior last year here. Just the emotions of this game, the ups and downs, another come from behind over time. What does it mean to you? I know you said this team is super close, but knowing that you have another chance to put on the Virginia jersey and play for a title. Um, I mean, it just comes down to everything that our, our team has put in, in the fall, in the spring. Um, we've been through a ton of adversity uh, throughout the entire year. And to see us battle and <laughs> game after game come back from behind, uh, I wish we could make it easier on ourselves and just uh, play well the whole, all four quarters. But I mean, the tenacity and the grit of this team is just unparalleled. And I'm just so happy I, I get another two days with this team. Uh, for both Docs and Ryan, uh, Duke uh, being able to beat Duke in this kind of situation after the history you guys have had with them, what what does that mean to, to get that monkey off your back as well? Um, yeah, they've had our number since uh, we've all been here, and um, you know we knew that that was a quote unquote monkey on our back for a while, and uh, but we really this week we try to separate the history from this game um, because it was the biggest stage that we've been in. Um, and we really just focus on ourselves this week. Uh, we didn't think about, you know, the 800-pound gorilla or whatever it's called. Um, and uh, we just stuck to our game plan, and it, it, it means a lot to us because, you know, they're obviously a great team. They're they're very well coached. They game plan for us very well. Um, they 
locked us down to two goals in the first half, and uh, we made some adjustments, and yeah, it feels pretty pretty good. So, yeah, just to add to that, um, we we've been focusing on ourselves uh, on pretty much every game throughout this entire season, and that could not be more true uh, this game. We we didn't play our game for the first three quarters, I don't think, and then in the fourth quarter we uh, we stuck to the system, and that's frankly that's why we keep coming back in these games is because we rely on those standards and what we call a stoop. Um, it's just kind of our offensive uh, like stigmas and things that we follow. Um, but we just relied on that and the unselfishness uh, of our team is why we're able to come back from these victories. And Duke is a great team. They played a great game. Uh, but like Doc said, we, we just try to focus on ourselves. Get to the middle, second row, gray shirt. After that goal, it seemed like you ran over right to the fans and, and uh, stuff like that. What was the uh, what's the emotion like in that kind of moment for you? Being yeah, it was just uh, overcome with emotions. I mean, I mean, they were great. They, they filled out an entire section plus some, and they're with us the whole game. And you know, when we were down and looked like we might have been out, uh, they kind of brought some life back into us. And um, you know, when Ian put it in. We all started running, and uh, I just I just heard them. They were so loud, and I uh, was just drawn to them and uh, wanted to get them a little louder. So cause I, <laughs> I want more for the next game, and uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. But uh, yeah, it's, it's what happened. Ryan, I feel like these are the same questions we asked you last week in Long <laughs> Island, but uh, PD won the last eight face-offs in the game. Can you come back against the team, the caliber of Duke, without him doing what he did? No. Uh, I could answer just like that. I'll go a little bit further, though. Um, <laughs> he has stood on his head the entire season, and that he is a huge, huge part as to why we are able to uh, come back in these games. This is actually the first time we've played defense in overtime. Um, every other game, he's won the faceoff, <laughs> and we've just gone down and scored. Uh, and I think that's credit to our defense uh, stepping up in OT. Um, but PD has been huge the entire year, and this game is just another one of those days. So. Ryan, from a leadership standpoint, obviously you're, this is all new. You're checking off things yourself too, but the guys look up to you for your take, your leadership, and, and if you can speak to this too. But what's your message is trying to lead by example from a place you also haven't been? Uh, it's just one game at a time and just ride that emotion and, and rely on and trust uh, the process basically of our team. We brought all of our stuff to this game uh, from the hotel, so we had to earn going back to the hotel to sleep there for another night. So uh, we, we came here to win one game. And we did that, and now we're moving on to the next one. Yeah, um, just to go off that, um, Ryan's leadership is, uh, is unreal. Um, I can't be thankful uh, enough um, for what he's done uh, for me personally, but, but everyone. Um, Docs, too. Um, these guys are some, some of the people that I can just lean on whenever I need something. Um, and, they, and they gave me that confidence um, on the field. And, and just there's that sense that you just know when Ryan's on the field that all good things are going to happen. So I'm um, excited that we earned one more game with Ryan, and I know he's going to give it his all. Uh, Docs, um, I wanted to ask you, not only is this a special win, but it's done in your backyard. What does that mean being here in Philly and also playing the championship game here Monday in Philly? Yeah, it means a lot. Um, I mean, I've been at the stadium probably over 20 times now, and all in the stands. Um, I'm a huge Eagles fan, and I was fortunate enough to follow the Super Bowl at uh, 52 run, that was one of the greatest moments of my life, but I think this tops that for sure. And just to be in this stadium and, um, you know, just be, you know, 20 minutes from my house and uh, have a lot of support from friends and family, it's, it's a dream come true, so. Hey, uh, Ryan, can you just discuss way how the team was able to stay together and grind your way back to force the game to overtime and then win it? Yeah, it's something we've been doing uh, throughout the entire year, just relying on on our process and, and trusting everybody and the coaches to put us in the right places. And obviously, we had some individual efforts with Peter LaSala, Jared Connors, and some offensive guys putting it back in the net. But it really just comes down to trust in uh, our process and our coaches and just our offense and defense. So, Ian, what kind of pride do you take in, in the riding game? Obviously, it's something you, you uh, care a lot about. And then, you know, Docs and Ryan talk about that as well. And Coach Tiffany? Yeah, um, it's almost one of my favorite, favorite parts of playing attack. Um, it, Coach Tiffany, too, is really into it. Um, it drives us, but 
it's just not the players on the field. It comes from the guys on the bench. Um, they scream. They, they get us going, and they give us that, that energy, the 11th man out on that field. Um, but flying around with Matt and Mike, um, it's, it's, it's pretty fun. And, and when we do get a turnover, it's almost better than a goal. Yeah, I think uh, we have so, as a midfield, we have so much confidence in our attack, being able to ride the ball back. Um, Ryan and I and the rest of the midfielders know that, you know, if there's a save and we can cover up all the, the guys that are trying to clear um, around the midfield and we can kind of cover those gaps. We know that the pressure that the attack's going to put on the uh, close defense and the goal is going to, is going to you know, cause some ride back. So we take a lot of pride in it and, um, you know, they, they do all the work. We just kind of do the easy part and zone it up and, um, trying to be smart with who we're covering, how we're going out, when we're going out. And, um, yeah, it's a huge part of how we get, get a lot of goals. So it's, it's definitely uh, it's cool. And we got, we got a couple back today, so that's definitely awesome. So we got to keep that up. It's, um, it's a calculated risk. To, you know, it's a lot of teams, when they lose possession, will have their offensive middies get out of the game as fast as possible or just lock on somebody and then go out the game with that personnel. You know, we asked the, the two men next to me, our midfielders, you know, read it. Can you stay in and make a play? You know, and uh, you have to be in shape. You know, you have to, the, the fitness is key. Um, but it does start with that front line. You know, I keep using that analogy with football, that defensive front three or four. You know, those have just a front three and attack with Michael Krause, Ian Laviano, and Matt Moore. They got to put heavy pressure on that quarterback. We got to get to the get goal in defense. Um, and then from there, the back line, the back wall, our safeties can push up, you know, and almost dare them to throw the ball over the top of us. It's a... Um, it's an analogy of blitz into safety, you know, in football. Duke dealt with it pretty well today. You know, we only got the three fails on them. And uh, that's a tribute to their, their, their preparation and their athleticism. You know, they're difficult. You know, obviously, when you're playing the best defense, you, you put your long sticks out there. We're asking guys with short sticks, these three plus a couple others, to stop somebody with a check. And so you got to be relentless and tenacious. And, and I'm really, really grateful to have the attack and these offensive middies who are committed to it. The teams I coach in our program, we're going to pursue to be the best team in the, in the country in the ride, and we're going to pursue being the best ground ball team. And so they go hand in hand. Um, for Docs and Ian and Ryan, how closely did you guys follow the basketball team this season? And was there <laughs> any sense of, hey, we want to do that too? Um, I think I, I followed it decently closely. I mean, uh, they're walking around school and stuff. I was in a class with Mamadi Diakite, who had you know, the game tying shot in the Elite Eight in Purdue. So. That was definitely a cool ride for us, just to follow along and you know get to know some of those those guys. And um, you know they have a system, they stick to it, and uh, that's something that we can take from. And it's uh, really cool that we have an example that we can follow. Um, so yeah. Well, last question for the players in the front here. Docs, you mentioned having uh, played in Lincoln Financial Field 20 times in your career. Other than today's game, is there one that really sticks out to you, one you'll always remember? Uh, I, this is my first time playing. I'm just, I, uh, I watched a ton of Eagles game in here. I think um, <laughs> if you're asking what my favorite Eagles game is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. I, mean, uh, the I would Giants? say. Or the Cowboys? It's a good question. <laughs> uh, I was at the Texans game last year, which was a great game. That was a Nick Foles classic, so. <laughs>